Hi folks, how you doing? Russell True Results 303.com. Check out the website, link in the description box, Mind Body Spirit Fitness. Put in the healing back in health. Once again, don't forget to follow on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. The podcast is out there as well. Those links are down below. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Coming at you today with just a few short stories that will hopefully motivate you, give you a different perspective on life. You know, I'm not a person that's really into novels and storybooks. I like to, I like to read concrete facts, but it's something that I'm trying to get into. More poetry, things along those lines, because you need to be balanced in both ways of life. Right? So this is going to be a few little short stories that I got from my Advent reading. So the book is just, you can see, it's just a little spiritual book. Just the advent for this year for Catholics. All right, so here's number one. During the war in Sarajevo, a reporter saw a child being shot, and he rushed to a man, cradling her. As the man cried, as the man carried her, the reporter guided him to his car and sped off to the hospital. Hurry, the man urged. My child is still alive. A moment later, he pleaded, hurry. My child is still breathing. A little later, please, my child is still warm. Although the reporter drove quickly, the little girl died. In sadness, the man said, I must now go tell her father that his child has died. He will be heartbroken. The reporter stood speechless, looking at the grieving man. He said, I thought she was your child. The, rat, the man replied, no, but aren't they all our children? Just something to think about. I thought that one was very touching. I think we've got to understand that we as a people, we're more united and more interlinked with each other than we think. I was listening to some strange fact and they said, you know, we always want to pick sides of black, white, Christian, Muslim, liberal, Demo Republican, whatever the case may be. And I heard a weird story. If you go back into the anthropology, the study of man, we are all like, 50th cousins, no matter what. Everybody in the world is like 50th cousins, which I thought was interesting. So here's another one. A visitor to New York asked a passerby to show him the Empire State Building. The New, Year, the New Yorker took him two blocks away and then pointed back in the direction from which they had come. There it is. Why didn't you tell me that when we were back there? Because, the New Yorker replied, you were too close to see it. I think we've got to understand that as well, even within our own lives. I've mentioned this before. Usually the people that are around us the most, that see the way we act, the way we talk, the way we think, the way we carry ourselves, they know us better than we know ourselves, right? Because we live in this ego-driven world within which we're going to lie to ourselves about, you know, I, I, I had this concept, I think I made a video about it, unjustified justification. Right? It's, oh, they did it, so I'm going to do it. Or this happened, that's why I did this. And we've got to understand that sometimes we need to step back from the situation and see what's going on around us. That's another way I've kind of heard uh, someone explain God, right? And how we don't understand God's plan for us sometimes. Bad things happen, good things happen. Why did this happen? Why did that happen? So pretend you're at a parade. Right, and it's multiple blocks, and you could be the person down on the you know right next to the parade, and you can only see what's happening as you're watching it come by. Versus God would be up on the building right above it, and He can see everything on what's going on. Okay, so just just something little there. I know that was uh, I thought it was a good thing to say right there, so I said it. All right, the next one. In the days when things cost much less, a young boy asked the price of a Sunday. The, wait the waitress replied 50 cents. Studying his coins, he inquired about a dish of plain ice cream. 35 cents, was the reply. After again counting his coins, he ordered plain ice cream. Finishing the ice cream, the boy paid the cashier and left. When the waitress came back to clear the table, she swallowed hard at what she saw. Placed neatly beside the empty dish, 
were two nickels and five pennies. Always thinking of others first, this is one of the many messages in today's gospel. So once again, I've got to understand those types of things as well, right? We always talk about, you know, men, we've lost chival chivalrousness, chivalry. We'll just go with that, right? Or what happened to, you know, people will say they'll meet older people and there's kind of this new, to them, this weird strangeness of, of, and tradition about these men and the values that these older men hold. And I think this kind of best shows that on how we need to truly, once again, respect those around us, help those around us, and make sacrifices on a daily basis to help our fellow man, our fellow woman, for those of you who get upset if we use the term man. Next, at his AM appointment, an elder man told the doctor he needed to be done before 9 a.m. The man explained that every morning he went to the nursing home for breakfast with his wife. As the doctor inquired about his wife, the man replied that because of Alzheimer's, she hadn't known him for the past five years. Astonished, the doctor asked why he kept going if she didn't know who he was. Because I still know who she is, replied the gentleman. And then, of course, the gentleman's faithfulness is an echo of the lavish fidelity of the shepherd in today's parable. So once again, I think we need to remember that, right? Once again, it's remembering those people. And I think for yourself, it's good to know where you've come from to where, where you've come from to where you are now. And I think that's what we've got to truly understand that if we ever forget, you know, that's that main thing. They forgot where they came from. They forgot where they came from. And you need to truly understand where you've come from, how far you've gone. Because in those times and those periods of rough patches, you need to sometimes remember the success story of your life. Or sometimes you need to know where God has brought you out of, right? Your exodus, your Egypt, the things that you have conquered during times of struggle. We need to understand these things. Next one. A few years ago, a group of people were pra uh, participating in a center prayer retreat. One afternoon, they were invited to leave the quiet retreat center and take public transportation into the bustling city. Each of them then went to a different location in the city to find a space to sit in quiet prayer for an hour amid the noise and busy activity. The next day, an article appeared in the local newspaper. The police had been surprised the day before. They couldn't recall this ever happening before. Before, For an hour the previous day, they had no phone calls, no requests for help. It had been a peaceful hour. It's a sign of the power of prayer, the power of prayer together, the power of community, the power of acting to make a difference. It's an example of comfort, but also a summons of challenge. How do we fulfill our destiny as prayers and doers? To put an end to wrath, to make a peaceful world. So once again, I think it, it just shows that we are capable of so much more. And of course, we are capable of so much more when we surround ourselves with positivity, with influential people that are going to guide us in the right direction. And you need to be that for someone else as well. And I think this is the last one because the next page would be today's reading. So here's the last one. One day, as Itzik Perlman, I-T-Z-H-A-K, Perlman was performing a difficult piece, one of the strings on his violin snapped. The audience gasped. Perlman mentioned, uh, motioned to the conductor to continue. For over six minutes, he never missed a beat or lost a tone. Perlman instantaneously transposed the music from the missing string onto the remaining three strings. When he finished, the audience sat in silence. Stunned at what he was able to do, Perlman said, This has been my vocation, my lifelong mission, to make music out of what remains. So what are you going to do with this remaining time in your life? How are you going to make change? How are you going to use this valuable time you have left on this earth to better it, yourself, those around you, and make up for that lost time? 
Make something out of what remains. So once again, I hope this helps. I hope it gives you something to think about. Uh, ways that you need to change and improve your life. And really make this next year better. Because of course it's probably going to be coming out right before the new year. So how are you going to make life better for the new year? I hope you can figure something out. So once again, don't forget to follow on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Google+, the podcast, All True Results 303, all links in the description box. Subscribe to this channel, share and like these videos.